There's something I want to share, but I'm a little afraid to share it here because it might make you a little uncomfortable. But maybe you'd be willing to navigate that discomfort together with me so I can tell you why you should be working half as much as you do now. What do you think? Are you willing? Okay. I'm 10 years old, and I'm back home in India, in my mother's family home. And I'm really excited to be there because we used to live abroad most of the time. And when I get to go back home, I'm with my cousins and my aunts and uncles and my grandparents who all live in this big, beautiful house in an affluent neighborhood in Delhi. And my cousins and I, we get together and we create performances for our parents. And this time, we're busy preparing a big party for New Year's Eve the next night. And I'm in charge of music. So I'm happy, and I don't mind that my mother has left me there for the day. So I'm a little bit surprised when I go to the bathroom and see that red spot in my underwear. I had just gotten my first period, and I wasn't prepared. So I go to my grandmother, and she says, oh, I can't help you. Go to your cousin. And my cousin, she's sort of tomboy, and she sort of hands me a sanitary napkin like this, and I'm like, what do I do with this? And she says, you know, the back is adhesive. Just stick it in your pants. So I said, okay, thank you, and I was feeling so uncomfortable asking for help with this from anyone but my own mother. So then I called her and I said, Mom, I just got my period and you weren't here. Why didn't you prepare me? My mother is as surprised as I am. She too was not prepared. Now, is it making you maybe a little uncomfortable to hear me talking about my period this way? Don't worry, this talk is not just about periods. It's actually about the future of work. But the reason I'm telling you this is because I want to remind you that 51% of the world's population goes through this. And 100% of us came from a menstruating woman, and yet we don't talk about it. Many of us don't even know about it, but it affects us also at work. My discomfort did not stop there. Every month for two or three days, I would be doubled over in pain. I went all the way across the world to New York City to go to university and start my professional career as a designer, yet every once in a while, I just wanted to turn right back around and go home or have to lie on the conference room floor at my first job. And that wasn't all. For the week before my period, I had intense emotional discomfort. I felt sad and angry and irritable and impatient and everything. And to top it all, I was told that my uncomfortable emotions made other people uncomfortable. So I just was supposed to deal with this week of PMS, pre-menstrual syndrome by myself. Now, maybe you're thinking, you know, women who go through this, we should just give them some time off from work. But you know, that's not going to work for us. Because there are already so many reasons to exclude women from promotions and raises and leadership positions. Excluding us from work for two weeks out of the month just for what our bodies put us through is absolutely not acceptable, and it was not part of my plans for my very successful career as a professional. So 
I was determined to be as productive as everyone else, if not more. So I did what any of us would do. I suppressed those emotions and I pushed through that pain to be productive. All the way to burnout. And it was when I was forced to slow down that I finally started to realize that these bad feelings I was having were actually my body's way to guide me back towards health. My uncomfortable emotions were not just inconvenient hurdles on my path to success. They were actually useful information. And when I actually started to give in to those emotions, I became more creative. But it took me nearly a decade to get there. So around 2014, I started tracking my cycle. And I discovered something that is strangely not common knowledge. Our hormonal cycle is not as mysterious as doctors will tell you. In fact, the feminine hormonal cycle is a lot like any other cycle in nature that supports life. There is a clear phase of increasing energy towards ovulation, and then a clear phase of decreasing energy towards menstruation. As you approach peak fertility, your body gives you all this energy so you can secure your capacity to generate future life. And that phase of darkness, of menstruation, is actually clearing the path to renewed fertility. A phase of rest followed by a phase of harvest. And this hope happens over the course of about four weeks or 28 days, which is approximately also the cadence of the moon cycle. And the annual seasonal cycle over a year actually also has a similar phase of rest and harvest. The dark phase in these cycles actually creates space for roots to deepen. After all, roots deepen in the darkness. And the deeper the roots, the stronger and more abundant the harvest. Without the space to rest, you can't have an eternal harvest. Eventually, you'll burn out. So let's take a look at the current work cycle. We have months, we have years, we even have quarters, but there is no dark phase. No space to rest and regenerate and ensure an eternal harvest. Does this seem right to you? And as technology is rapidly changing the very nature of work, from manual and physical to mental and emotional, it doesn't make any sense anymore to be the strongest and fittest. Work is partial to the smartest and the most sensitive. But when we're operating from our minds and our hearts, longer hours don't increase our productivity. In fact, they compromise it. In the future of work, we humans need to stop trying to compete with machines and instead learn to complement them. By developing our deeply human emotional skills, like empathy and creativity, because let me ask you a question. When are you most creative? When are you most creative? When clients come to me these days, they often ask me to help their teams and organizations become more creative. And I typically start a session by asking them the question, when are you most creative? And the answer inevitably comes back, in the shower, on a run, on vacation, in bed. When we are relaxed. 
But how often are you relaxed at work? Where in this work cycle do we give people a chance to be relaxed enough to be creative? So perhaps it's time we integrate rest to harvest and follow the rhythm of natural cycles in our work cycle. Maybe it's not just us women who need two weeks off every month. Maybe we all do. So that we can be creative at work instead of on vacation. So hear me out. Imagine that work looked like this. Two weeks on, planting seeds, full energy. And then two weeks off to rest, recover, reflect, and invest in becoming more internally resourced. And I don't just mean alone on your own time. I mean at work, together with the people you work with. Imagine that in those two weeks, you would share your emotions and your vulnerabilities, and you would de collectively develop your capacity to use this internal human technology, this internal guidance system. And this does not just apply to women. In fact, I'd like to address the men in the room for a moment. Can you imagine exploring and expressing your emotions without the fear of being labeled weak or incompetent, especially at work? Can we all imagine bringing our whole human selves to work? Because, you know, emotions are not feminine. They're human. And assuming that emotions and menstruation should be left out of the workplace as costly liabilities, rather than investing in developing and nurturing this built-in technology that we all have, is frankly a missed opportunity. So, Imagine that we truly integrate rest to harvest into not just our work cycles, but our work culture. When we do so, we don't just make it possible for more women to enter work. We don't just make it possible to ensure our future fertility. We actually create the opportunity to transform workplaces into spaces of conscious human evolution. Now, maybe this sounds pretty radical to you right now, but I believe that the most courageous leaders of the future-proof workforce will truly invest in spaces to rest, to cultivate the ingredients of radical human development. Safety, belonging, empathy, sensitivity. In order to harvest our highest capabilities as human beings, courage, creativity, innovation, leadership, to name a few, simply by creating a pause, a period, a full stop, the end of something, a small breath before beginning again. Culture doesn't change overnight. It starts with changing our behaviors and rituals. So maybe you don't have to start straight away with two weeks off. 
Maybe you can start with two hours and then two days and maybe eventually a week to simply slow down together with the people you work with and tune inward to ourselves and each other to develop our understanding of this internal human technology in order to harvest the richest, most abundant future that we could possibly imagine. Perhaps all you need to do to start is share something at work that you feel a little bit uncomfortable sharing. Navigate your discomfort together with the people you work with. You've already done it here tonight. Do it again this week and the next week and the next. See what happens. Let's radically redesign work to integrate the space to rest, to harvest. I invite you all to rest, to harvest. Rest, to harvest. Thank you.